Hello everyone, Cizenea here, and in today's tutorial I'll teach you how to create this Japanese wave pattern in Affinity Designer. This pattern is known in Japanese as Seigai Ha and is meant to symbolize good luck. As I explained in my previous tutorials, in order to create a pattern for a pattern fill in Affinity Designer, we first need to identify the tile that repeats itself throughout the composition. In this particular pattern, I identify the following tile that I highlighted with the red rectangle. The key to identifying a tile in a pattern is that it must start at the top, where it ends at the bottom, and it must start on the left, where it ends on the right. This is what the tile is going to look like after we have created and exported it. Alright, so to get started we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it A5 in Dimension, Orientation to Portrait, and we set the document units to Pixels and we click on Create, and then we make sure that's snapping, Snap to Guides, Snap to Object Bounding Boxes, and Include Bounding Box Midpoints is enabled, and then we go to View Guides, and we add a vertical guide to the composition, and then we're going to start drawing the waves. So we take the Ellipse tool, we set the field to white, we set the stroke to blue, to a lighter shade of blue, and the stroke width to 5. And then we go ahead and we draw a circle, and we give it 400 by 400 pixels in the transform panel. And then we are going to use this circle to create a set of 4 concentric circles of equal distance intervals. So before we start duplicating the circle, we go here to the stroke panel and we set align to align stroke to inside. We do this in order to have the circle be of 400 by 400 pixels in dimensions, including the stroke, and also when we snap it, to have the stroke snap inside the bounding box. And then we're going to start duplicating the circle. So here in the transform panel, we set the anchor point to the point in the middle, in order to rescale in relation to the center of the figure. And then we press Ctrl J to duplicate the circle. And we set the width and the height of the duplicated circle to 300 pixels. So now we have our second concentric circle. We press Ctrl J to duplicate it again. And we set the width and the height of the third duplicated circle to 200 pixels. And we press Ctrl J once more. And we set the width and the height of the fourth circle to 100 pixels. So now we have created our first wave unit. So we select all four circles and we press on Ctrl G to group them together. And we are going to use this wave unit to create the other wave units that we need to create the tile. So we are going to need six of such wave units for the tile. So we take the group and we snap it to the vertical guide. And we press on Ctrl J to duplicate the group. And then we move the duplicated group on the right while holding shift to keep it on a straight line. Until it snaps to the guide on the left. So now we have two wave units, we select both of them. We press on Ctrl J to duplicate them both. And then we bring the two duplicated wave units to the front, to the front of the composition. And then we move them downwards while holding shift until their top points snaps to the midpoints of the two first waves, so it must be positioned like this. And lastly, we are going to need one more wave unit here, and one more wave unit here. So in order to create them, we select two wave units like this vertically. We press on Ctrl J to duplicate them, and then we move them to the left while holding Shift, until their midpoint snaps to the vertical guide. And then we're going to move these two wave units downwards by one fourth of the length of one wave units. So that means we're going to move them downwards by 100 pixels. So in order to do that, here in the transform panel, we're going to add 100 pixels to their Y value. And as you can see, this brings them downwards 
by one fourth of the size of a wave unit. All right, so now we have created all the wave units that we need in order to create the tile. So the tile is going to be located from the middle of this group here to the midpoint of this group here. And we are going to delineate it with the rectangle tool. So we take the rectangle tool, we set the fill and the stroke to none, and then we go ahead and we draw a rectangle from the middle of this wave here to the middle of this wave here. And then we select the rectangle in the transform panel. We make sure that it is positioned correctly. And then we are going to export what's within the rectangle. So we go to File Export. We set the document type to PNG and area to selection area to export only what's within the rectangle. And then we we'll click on Export. And then once we have exported, we are going to use the tile to make a pattern fill to test it. So we create a new composition. We take the rectangle tool. We set the fill and the stroke to none. And we draw a rectangle all over the composition. We select the rectangle in the layers panel and we take the vector float fill tool. We go here to set bitmap fill. And we select the tile that we just created. We click on the composition and this creates a pattern fill. And then we can adjust the pattern to make it bigger or smaller. So if the pattern was created correctly, there should be no discrepancy in the waves. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to create a Japanese wave pattern in Affinity Designer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye.